So, as I was saying, in the event that there is negligence, you know negligence? Negligence? When you are at work, you are supposed to wear protective clothing. If the area where you are working is prone to accident. Thank you. Some of the operations in manufacturing and so on can be very hazardous. Like where there are fumes, you know fumes? <laughs> Gases, you are supposed to wear masks. Where there are bad glaring ultraviolet rays, they are supposed to wear goggles. Where there are a lot of sharp things, they wear what? Boots. Boots. So if if the company doesn't buy goggles, the company doesn't buy boots, doesn't protect the people, it is negligence. So if it is negligence, the act is very severe on the employer. So, if it is possible, can we discuss these two issues? The process to be followed for determination of disability and the extent of disability, either temporary or permanent. I will tell you to say, when someone is injured while at work, or catches a disease, or dies, the company must report within 14 days. I think I have said it before. If he doesn't and they discover there's a very severe punishment to the company. Reason the government is interested to make sure that the person who is injured must be taken care of. After the 14 days, government issues a document to say take it to the hospital so that the hospital should go through the entire treatment of the injured. If it is death, they should certify how death occurred. Now, at the end of treatment, the doctor certifies to say, this one is healed completely. Can you not tell about it? Oh. But if they say, no, he is healed, but the healing will take a long time. Maybe the complete healing will take a year or two. There is what they call temporary disability. So they charge a certain amount to cover the temporary disability. However, in the event that they say, I will give an example. Some of the factory processes can make Error by mistake, kudula, dip, kudula, kono. After barrel is a recapoa. Do you think that is a temporary disability? No. It's permanent. Hey. Hey, it's permanent. See, kono wa ruka. It can't be temporary. <laughs> so, the the charges that they will calculate there, the percentage will be high, maybe 90, 100 percent. So you get charged, you get damages from it. That's the first one. The second one, discuss whether if you get injured, while going to work would, would be on an injury and work and be compensated if permanent disability occurs. What it is saying is possible to be achieved. The Kamacho Kapunyumba must be a good thing to touch down those things. The carrier report, you know, oh, yeah, I'm 
Is that injury required at work? No. Why? Because you were not yet. I was not yet at, at work. Okay? To give us an appointment. I think we all understand each other. What about you at Mr. Gandhi? Kunyumba kwanga. Kuzantinga kuti mzabiri nchi. Gani moto ya chika nguzi? Eh? Ah. Ah, you are good very much. <laughs> so, we have to distinguish between how you consider whether the injury has been uh, occurred while at work or not. People have been confusing to say when you are injured hard at work, it means you are already in the place and doing your work, isn't it? No. The idea is when does the organization engage you for work, even if you are not at work? So if they send a car to come and collect you from home and you are coming to the office, to your workstation, if the car has an accident, you are at work. Capricana. Eh? We are together. Okay. So, another one, examples of injuries. I think these are the ones that I think are important. Typical worker workman's compensation injuries are you know you can sprain your muscles. Okay. Muscle sprain, yes. Or strains muscle and tears. Tears, zero tears. Kungambi kayani patupi kayani. Tears. Kungambi right? Hey, machines can do that. Fractures. Ma fracture ama futa. Bone fractures. Mugudesi mm -hmm. Right? Cuts. Cuts. Lacerations, they are almost the same. Cuts and lacerations are almost the same. And the punctures. You know a puncture? A puncture. Okay, then burns from furnace fires. Kupsha, ena na maapsha kan chitu. Maziwa ma processes ena, ama gilisa chitu moto. Sinjo? Yes. Have you seen ena ama tenga zima rogu sisiju? Kuzika mu furnace. Zima apsha chie. Yuguzi tenga kumazimu. Zime ya me ya muti awongoli ya kambi china chati. Hey, kuma tawe zina china chima, chima duka kumele kukono. Hey, in fact one of the worst I've watched, I've seen, but not physically myself there, but watch for film. Zija zima ama watcha ni, zima inda mashini, chima kacha kupisha kwa mbili. By mistake, how is it? Chima duka mi forward. Duka uka menya mufu. Mene chima pshera. Kudula mufu. De half. Chifuka cha mufu. Tell me. Also, car accident injuries. Just like that one I was telling you. If you are traveling from here to Blanda to work, you are going on duty, is it? If you have an accident, it's an injury at work. Repetitive strain or stress, RSIS, such as carpal tunnel, tendon, mitis. These are medical, <laughs> medical things, eh? and back pain. Back pain is what? At least back pain is what? 
zina hizo au explain this then sleeps trips kungu kwa and you can you know you can spread your uh, bones or something or kungu kwa all these have got their effects on the body so all these are some of the uh, injuries that are expected quite at least to explain some of these that one they call what capotani can someone read that can you read that that may be the why by your here difficult for you so if if your arm reaches that point can you do a lot of work no. you can't be right yeah. you see the other one is tendonitis whatever it is can you read tendonitis mm-hmm. tendons are cords connecting muscles to bones mm-hmm. tendonitis is inflammation of this big various cords called tendons that attach muscles to bone to bone. Some some weight related activities cause a condition which causes pain and tenderness just outside the joint. Mm-hmm. Tendonitis that occur in any tendon, but it's most common along shoulders, elbows, wrists, knees, and heels. And it's often caused by some weight related activities. Mm-hmm. So, it's very easy. Matendo, matendo, I think you can know if you read your biology, it's coming from tendons. Tendons actually uh, connect muscles to bones so that you can be able to do this. So, if those get affected by whatever pressure or being hit or something, you will suffer from that. The last one is psychosis. What about psychosis? Psychosis. Psychosis is a long-term lung disease caused by a very large amount of crystalline silica dust, mm-hmm. usually over many years. Silica is a substance naturally found in a, found in certain types of stones, log, sand, and clay. When working with these materials can create a very fine dust that can be easily inhaled and cause irreparable damage to the lungs. Mm. Actually, those dust particles, when they get into your lung, once they stick, it's almost impossible to get them off. See, they are in the lungs. It's unlike um, no more dust. Dust from fungi, fungi. When you inhale, you find that the lungs have their own method of accumulating mucus. You know what the mucus does? Mucus is a kind of protection. It's a. It's almost like a defensive white blood cell protection. It, it is a 
permitted so that it can go around that thing which is foreign. Chimini chata, chidasi, chifundi, chukumba, and it forces chifundi kuti chichoke where it has settled in the land. Mukumba, what do you mean? Chika choka, you cough in form of what? Mucus. Mukumba, what do you mean? That's why you get it in the nose, in the mouth, in the cross of water. Right? But that is uh, treatable because it can go out. But it's silicon dust. The Imamera doesn't come out. It can't be. That mucus cannot remove it. So it is very dangerous. It's a lifelong problem. Once you've got silicosis, you never uh, uh, Yeah, I will say. I will say. Don't worry. So, all these are some of the uh, injuries that you get while at work. Now, the factor is act. In brief, I already said that this act, the factories act, is a comprehensive piece of legislation covering all aspects of relating to factories, which include one, the act makes sure that whoever is going to do to uh, be involved with factories must have the activity approved, licensed, and registered. Okay? That's the first thing. That act also makes the organization like the labor, Ministry of Labor, to have inspectors to inspect the factories under the act. Inspection means the Ministry of Labor inspectors have to go there to find out whether the factory is properly instituted. They also examine the health, safety, and welfare of the work, welfare, working hours, employment of adults and young people in the factory. Why they inspect or they look for that, the reason to have such that in a factory there must be some health, safety and welfare measures in place. For instance, if you have a factory, they make sure that when you have a processing factory, there's a much machinery and so on. When you have toilets, they must also have bathrooms. Yes. Toilets and also bathrooms. Of course, if there are ladies who are also employed in the factory, they must also have toilets for ladies separate and bathrooms. Most factories, they have uniforms to wear while at work, but not at home. So when you get to the factory, you must change your clothes. So it means they must have cabinet. Every employee has his cabinet where he can keep his clothes while he takes on his uniform and works in the factory. Also, employee, uh, also uh, important is welfare. Welfare here means if these people have very short lifetime, can they go back home and eat and come back? Very one hour, and yet they work, they walk six from 10 miles away to work. Can they go to lunch and come back? Most factories provide lunch as part of the workplace. Some factories even provide transport. I remember one time. People were walking from six miles, six miles, eh? The 
Nanjiri. You know Nanjiri? To go and wait for me. Yeah, I know. Majestic. Majestic. Yes. People were walking. Chito saw people were walking from Nanjiri and the six miles to Kagura and Chito Kadeng. When I was a regional labor officer, I went to talk to them. I said, Are you very, are you people human? You allow people to walk from Nanjiri six miles to here to work. It means he starts walking from his house between half three and four o'clock for him to reach there half past seven. There are five o'clock. There are no money to catch a bus or something. They have to walk. After a long lengthy involvement of Minister of Labor, now you can see. I'm an passenger. She tried to see that she was a man who was a You understand what I mean? That is part of the work. So, also, it has to make sure that you get this. This is what employees Okay. The law will also actually impose fines on those people who break any one of those provisions. So the inspectors, when they go there, they notice these things. Like I noticed these people walking from six miles. Now they said, okay, we'll give them transport, but try to find houses in area 25. So quite a number of them started transferring their homes to area 25. Anyway, that's some years here. Finally, this is just the scope of the factories. It will deal with safety. Health, welfare, working hours, holidays, penalties, registration, licensing, and approval. What is important is that while the Factories Act is dealing with these things, the other acts also do deal with some of these things like safety, health, welfare. There are some acts which helps, there are standard law acts which also deal with the same, like the Occupational Safety and Health Act. It also touches on the same thing. Are we clear about the factories act? Now I just want to find out from you, which are these factories? Which are the factories that you know must be uh, dealt with by the factories act. Mining. Mining, yes. Some mining, yes, you are right. Those who process things like Malawi, Malawi, Bakery. Eh? Yeah? I, I did hear you. Oh, 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 yes. Or we used to have Portland cement. There are a lot of companies which have got factories. Construction? Yeah, construction, those are usually undermining. Yeah. 
So, in fact, that this act also covers some of these things. One, can you help to read it for me? Uh, in yes. <laughs> <laughs> the factories act also covers topics such as how factories should handle one cleanliness, yeah. two ventilation and temperature, mm -hmm. dust and fumes, mm -hmm. lighting, mm -hmm. drinking water, mm -hmm. facilities for washing, mm -hmm. drying, and sitting, first aid appliances, mm -hmm. and things. And shelters, less rooms, and lunch rooms. Okay. So you can see how important the factory is. At some times, you may even think this is very comprehensive. The only problem that we have is that it, it takes a long time to make changes to these acts to be in keeping or to align with the current, current circumstances. Some of these acts are very, very old. Any questions on the factory that? If I ask you a question on the factory that, would you answer? Yes. Someone says yes, good sir. Okay. <laughs> You may have a question might come in front of you. Now, the minds are being of that. There is a similarity between these two because some of the activities that mining is involved in are also very akin to factories. Is that not so? Okay. Here we have quite a number of issues to discuss. The first one is provision of mines, of rules, regulations for mining and minerals. How this act is enforced, examples of breaches of this act, and then when we say way forward, are you listening to me or you are? I will give you time to talk about this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't think that is correct. So if somebody is talking, ask for permission to say, me and her we want to discuss something. You give me time. Okay? Mandesa. Yes, sir. Please. So, provisions of the Mines and Minerals Act. As I was saying, I can't read. Can you help me now? Provisions of the Mines and Minerals Act. Mm -hmm. This act is made with the objective to regulate the development of mineral resources in the country through adherence to sustainable development mm -hmm. principles so as to benefit the economy and promote the economic growth of the country, mm -hmm. protect and improve the work welfare of the citizens, provide an attractive and conducive. He mines, he mines and minerals, it's here. Yeah, go. He mines and minerals act in Malawi governs the search for and mining of minerals. The act includes provision for mineral life, one mineral life. Mm -hmm. The minister grant, grants mineral life such as recognizes prospecting or mining licenses to individuals on behalf of the Republic of Malawi. Mm -hmm. Two, mineral, mineral tenement registra, registrar. Mm -hmm. The registrar of mineral tenements receives applications 
and maintains records. Mm -hmm. Okay. The brief on this is that the Minerals Act, you know, Malawi is one of the unlucky countries, while Rhodesia, South, Northern Rhodesia and Southern Rhodesia. Northern Rhodesia used to be Zambia. I mean, it is now Zambia. The Southern Rhodesia was Zimbabwe now. And then Nyasa, when they were uh, ruling this country, they exploited a lot of important mines in Northern Rhodesia and Southern Rhodesia. Here, they neglected us. What they did is they used Malawi as a source of labor to go and work in the mines in Zambia and Zimbabwe. Also, to a large extent, South Africa. But now, we have found that no, in Malawi we also have mines. Do you know what kind of minerals we have in Malawi? Have you ever, do you read? If you read about them, it's important to know. We do have gold, we do have coal, we have bauxite, we have, uh, I think, aluminium, and then rare earth, then we have platinum. Okay? These are exploitable mines, and some mining is now taking place. Now, mining involves a number, a number of activities. One, they have to apply and register with the government. After approval, they are allowed to do prospective. You know what, what we mean by prospective? Before they even find whether there's mining or not, they have to go and look for mines. That is prospective. They dig, they dig here, they find maybe there is some trace here, no, there is nothing, until they find it. After they have found where the mines are, they apply for the actual mining itself. When they have started mining, then the Mines and Minerals Act starts supervising and evaluating what they are doing to make sure that they comply with the rules and regulations. Some of the factories act also do apply to mining. There are some Timati misconducts of companies <coughs> that do mining and we call them breaches of the mining contract between the minerals, the, the mining companies and the government. One of the breaches is mining can cause one erosion. You know soil erosion? Yes. You learn it from what? Agriculture? Yes. Yes. Soil erosion. Since these people dig and they can dig earth and put it somewhere, when the rain comes, it will sweep that soil away. And where it goes, it can cause erosion. Okay? So, mining can cause erosion. Sink, sink holes. You know sink holes? You know sink holes? Especially in coal mining. They don't dig and go underneath and dig the coal. Among Umba. Oh, Munachita Ponjuela. So what you <laughs> what you create is a sinkhole. So some of them are large sinkholes which are actually called mining and the minerals act must act to make sure that those sinkholes do not cause danger to the environment as well as 
the evil. Lots of biodiversity. Mm -hmm. Do you know what is biodiversity? Super bowl. My water. Mkumbukile. Biodiversity is that the, the environment has a lot of living things, isn't it? Yes. Which are different from each other. There's human beings, animals, birds, water. <coughs> because of mining. Mining is a very devastating activity. Some of this biodiversity, which lives around there, will be disturbed. Birds will run away, butterflies will never be there, people cannot build their homes there, some of the animals will go away, the rabbits, rabbits will not germinate themselves, and so on and so on. So, biodiversity, it also gets caused there. Or, the contamination of the soil through soil erosion, pollution, you know, polluting ground well, the ground water. You know, some of the mining, you know, ground water. Do we use ground water? Yeah. How? Mijigo. You know, the earth is such that after a certain level, some of the water which comes as rains and so on sinks down and is kept at a certain level. And that water in normal circumstances is very clean because it's not disturbed by bacteria on the surface. So when you have sink wells, that's what we draw, that groundwater. But if you involve mining, some of the soils are the chemicals. They have chemical changes. They, they pollute the groundwater. Later on, you cannot drink it or you cannot use it. So, there's also that. Also, there's through acid mine drainage. You know, uh, one thing you can note is that you have seen that when there is rain, Buddha, if it's that one, can be eaten away. Yes? Speak up. I'm saying it would be, you have said it, second point, uh, first one, other things. Which one? Then? Can you speak up so that I can hear? You are saying I haven't finished this one? No, I don't. I'm not going to be Eh? Why is it a Zako Sama Balaji? You will wake at the other one, Balaji. You might wonder that you are still explaining on that. soften the rocks, the soils, and everything. The, that process develops acid. So when I was trying to say, have you seen, have you seen the rain during the rain? And have you seen what it does to the tarmac? Then you said, I have not finished I've, explaining. I've, I've, I've heard that. 
So I am saying, my example of rain was to explain exactly that. I said, have you seen the rain, what it does to tarmac? Have you ever seen what it does to tarmac? Paka karamvula kuma karma potholes. Have you seen? Do you know that potholes are caused by the rain? You, yes, how? Eh? Yeah? The rain has acid. Mukumva pamene. That acid is so strong it even eats the tarmac which is so strong when the rain has not fallen on it. But once the rain starts falling on it, it eats away the what? The tarmac. So that acid I am talking about is that's what I was trying to explain. To say that rain, the way it does to the tarmac, that's how the acid do, de deals with whatever is around those chemicals that they are using. Have I now completed your question? Yeah, visa. All right. You were just blocking me when I was explaining what I mean. What is going to happen? Acid, chemical acids emitted from mining processes also causing damage. Another cause of breach is mining can also be a source of water contamination, I think I've explained. Be acid mine drainage. Wastewater discharge, you know, wastewater discharge. Wastewater discharge, you understand wastewater discharge? Mm. Huh? Mining, when they are mining, after they have mined the rocks, eh? the best example is gold. You know where the mine gold? Then they make it go through water. When they go through water, the gold which is there, uh, the soft soil goes, the gold sinks down and becomes gold dust. But that water which goes is acidic and it, it's dangerous. Because it has been uh, mixed with chemicals. So those chemicals can be dangerous to the environment. My best means wastewater discharge. And this wastewater, they have to make sure it is not channeled towards the rivers. Because people will drink the water from the river, from the river isn't it? and people can be affected. Or the disposal of, of what? I can't think. Or, or, yeah. or trailings, yes. Tosalira, tosalira. Tosalira, after they have what? They have dissolved. Tina taje tuma salira, tumene tuja tuma kara also toxic or they can cause damage. Are we together? Mining has a lot of waste generation, the same like that. Minerals development rest, result in massive amounts of residues, both during extraction and utilization, some of which are hazardous to human health. In fact, from mining, eh, eh, I'll give you an example of platinum. You know what platinum is? Or oh, uranium. In Malawi, here we have uranium. These two are similar. You know uranium. Uranium, I believe. Kaya Kera. Kaya Kera. Uranium has radiation. That's why it is mined. Radiation 
is used to make atomic material which they can use for generating power for nuclear power stations or nuclear bombs. The mineral itself is very, very dangerous. It has radiation. If you you are if you are nuclear radiation over a long period of time, a lot of your body parts start dysfunction. You understand? To the extent that sometimes they stop working. And if they stop working, what happens to you? You die. You die. So radiation can be caused as a result of mining. So some of the some of these uh residues are actually hazardous to human health. Finally, these processes also affect the atmosphere through carbon emission, which can, uh, which contributes to climate change. This one is a very, it's a packed statement. I would call it packed statement because I will tell you what it does. One, when we say carbon emission, what do we mean? You understand carbon emission? Carbon emission. Yes. Yeah. You see, carbon is when you break down uh, fossil fuels. You know fossil fuels from coal, oil. One of the products from breaking that through burning and that kind of thing is carbon emission. Carbon, when it is carbon dioxide, it can be absorbed by what? What, what absorbs carbon dioxide? Yeah? Trees. 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 Who said the trees? Hey, you know. Yes. Yes. Carbon dioxide. Leaves. 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 It is absorbed by leaves. But when it goes into the leaves, what comes out? Oxygen, Oxygen which we breathe. But when that carbon, eh, there are no leaves. There are no leaves. That carbon still remains in the air. What does it do? Yes, it causes acidity. Yes. What else? <coughs> How? Like um, it hinders the layer mm -hmm. of a sun. Ozone layer. Ozone layer. Ozone layer. It breaks down the ozone layer. What is the use of the ozone layer? Is that the sun rays, the sun rays have very strong radiation. Same radiation like we get from uranium. You understand? But God was so clever, He put us with a cover. Okay? He put us with a cover of the ozone layer. See, this is the earth. earth. This is the sun. Right? Then there is the ozone layer. <coughs> right? This is earth. This is sun. When these rays come, right? This ozone layer here protects us from direct radiation. Come on. 
invisible medium. When it, this direct radiation from the sun, sun, when it reaches ozone layer, the ozone layer removes the radiation so that only the light, the Uber, the sunlight comes to the air. So this sunlight is, is safe. It's not as bad as the direct rays of the sun. Just like another example I can give. When somebody is doing well, see Abuza Uta Vaija Magogos. Those direct ultraviolet rays from the burning water are very dangerous to the eyes. But when you wear the goggles, those direct ultraviolet rays are blocked and what it comes is just light which you can see. So, this ozone layer, ozone layer is very important. Now the carbon emissions which come from here, from the earth, when they rise into the atmosphere, they break the ozone layer. They keep, they break it and keep the ozone layer out. Now if they break the ozone layer, what happens to the sun's radiation? Directly comes to us. And then it becomes hazardous. Are we, are we together? We are, is it? Yeah? So, mining has a lot of phenomena. Some of which is, a, yes, these processes also affect the atmosphere through carbon emissions, which contribute to climate change. So, the direct rays also cause heat, isn't it? That heat, when it comes to climate change, will turn into either heat which makes uh, water, a lot of water, go into the air. Uh, you have typhoons, you know typhoons? Or tropical cyclones. You have global warming. All those things are caused by direct rays in which the ozone layer has been destroyed. So, the emission of carbon emissions are very dangerous. Now, where do they, these carbon emissions come from? We have said, we have said they come from mining. Yet, which other areas does, it, uh, does carbon emission come from? Yes, okay. Another? Okay, industries. Industries, yes. Cars. Magai Moto. You know, these fuel, the, 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 the cars which use fuel, who use petrol, diesel, they emit carbon. That's why they want to turn into electrical cars now. So that we can reduce uh, emissions of carbon. Are we together? We are, is it? Yes. Protection from harm, harmful effects of from mining. One, mining can have harmful effects, as we have said, on the environment and human health. Here are some of the ways to protect against this. One, to protect workers' health. Okay? You protect workers' health from harmful effects. Like silicon. You remember? We protect human health. Also, minerals can protect them. Miners can protect themselves from health risks by wearing respiratory protection, such as dust masks 
and power power the air to refine respirators. So you remember I said some of the processes you you automatically have to wear masks or respirators. When it is respirators, it means masks you can still breathe the same air, but the hazardous gases are blocked. Empty. The respirators, you actually carry your own oxygen. Empty. In that area where you are working, the whole atmosphere in there, you should not breathe. Eh? We are together. Also, other, <coughs> other ways to protect workers include developing dust protection plan. How do they uh, protect dust from factors? Do you know how they do it? Yeah, from dust. If it is, let's assume this is a factor. And invariably, because of the processes, the machines running, cha -cha, some of the materials being cut, being ground, there is dust. How are these extracted? That's the best way to put it. The dust protection plan will include. Have you ever seen my vents? Vents? You know vents? Yes. Or ventilators? Yeah. They are. You know when you when you are using for heat or whatever. We have. Yeah. We don't have this. Mafan, eh? Mafan ya muno. What you could do? You might think I'm playing for many purposes. I'm going to survive. Eh? Come on, mafan ya many people who hold that thing. It takes the air out. You understand? Instead of bringing air in, it takes the dusty air out. So the mask in the plant there will be. Madijani takes yeah. ventilators. They are ventilators. So you must have dust protection plan, which includes installation of ventilators. Ensures proper use of hearing protection. You know, some of the activities in mining, in factories, are noisy, noisy, very high pitched noise. In some instances, the noise is so high you can't even hear with your normal hearing ears. And what happens if you, if you can't hear the noise but you are not protected? What will happen to your eardrum? They will be broken. So what do you look, do? You put ear protection equipment. Okay. Also, there is a providing training on spill spill response and chemical. IG plans, okay? I think I would spill response and chemical IG plans. In fact, all they are talking about here, you have to train people how to protect themselves against spillage of any chemicals or something, or how to protect yourself from any chemicals within the factory or the uh, machines. Also, controlling temperature. Hey, you should go to some of the factories. You can go to the factory very hot because of the processes happening there. To make sure that you can perform in an atmosphere like that, 
you must put how many kajani to cool the temperature to keep the temperature at such a level so that you can wake to bring the temperature down so you have what you call what do you have mafani are one of them other things AC. Yeah, but 